Gamarja Basa Katfalo. Uh, my name is Samuela Davidova. I'm Liberal and Representative to Georgia and also the Global Press Secretary. I would love to welcome you to our third season of our Liberal and in Georgia podcast. We have now here today our third episode already of this season, and my today's guest is uh, Levan Levani. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Levan, for coming today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, Levan has been uh, has more background in the legal and governmental perspective, but uh, he moved to the crypto space back in 2009, and uh, he's now on a wide intersection and deep intersection actually of uh, crypto business investment legal and uh, he's for sure one of the people in Georgia who moves the country to the international level and who has a very wide perspective so that's why I would love to uh, hear from him something more and to bring his perspective to you. Uh, Levan, how did you get to where are you today and what are you actually involved today because you're in so many projects please well thank you thank you for having me uh, well that's kind of a tough question <laughs> because it, it takes a lot to um, talk about it uh, from the outset but yes uh, from the beginning of bitcoin uh, somehow i got involved it and my professor at harvard law school helped me in that uh, he was my professor and uh, just like me, he was a constitutional lawyer, and then uh, he moved to cyber law, and I moved to cyber law as well. And that's where my engagement with the technology, especially cryptography and uh, other things, especially cyber crime, uh, cyber security started. And even though I was continuing to be in the uh, high government positions, I <clears throat> was um, constantly learning what's coming. And it's extremely important for the business, especially for Web3 and the blockchain and AI, to know a bit ahead what's coming. Um, for example, uh, we've been, uh, and I was part of uh, many European uh, legal developments in, in, the, in the field of AI. Uh, and to, today we already have the agreement at the European Union level to have the AI Act. And as of the beginning of April, we will have it adopted already. So, But everything in is it in this act, uh, we already knew about it some years ago. And we've been waiting for it. Because even though it regulates something, it also gives a lot of business opportunities. Okay, and these business opportunities lay into these new technologies, blockchain, Web3, crypto, regulatory frameworks, tokenization, securities, etc., etc. So I started exploring all of these uh, some, some five to seven years ago. And uh, there were a lot of nights I was, you know, self-learning it, you know, reading like 20, 25 articles every night. And it was so uh, involving and interesting for me that I really gave up on a um, big part of my legal profession, big part of my public life, big part of interest of the politics, etc., etc. So I fully dedicated myself to this, and especially in terms of business, because I'm also, I took a lot of courses, I took a lot of training, you know, in this field. And, this gave me uh, not only just kind of a <clears throat> new perspective of activities in business life in general, but also mm, I loved it, you know, and it, it uh, brings uh, big uh, personal satisfaction also to run this thing, to develop new projects. And right now I have so many partners around the globe and so many people and I've been involved in so many projects that uh, sometimes it's really, really hard to <laughs> follow all of it. But um, the crypto community, blockchain, Web3 uh, in general, and especially AI also, is based on community, based on networking, based on um, the relationship with the people and business development, because without bigger and massive adoption, it won't develop as much as it should be. Mm. And now, as we, if you look at the figures, for example, now the crypto adoption is slightly more than 6% globally, which is just an outset. So this also... If you look at it from the perspective, oh, is it good or is it bad? It's absolutely good, not mm -hmm. because it's not adopted so well and so uh, massively in the world, but also it brings the future perspective, you know. Six percent is just nothing, it's just starting. And if somebody asks you, ah, oh, relate into crypto, I relate into blockchain, no, absolutely not. Um, it's just starting, it's just getting started. And uh, <clears throat> if you look at the different regions in Europe, for example, from Liechtenstein, Luxembourg, Switzerland, uh, Malta, or in Eastern um, <coughs> New 
uh, new regulatory frameworks like uh, Emirates, uh, MENA region, uh, we can find out, uh, not to say anything about Singapore and uh, South Korea, etc., Hong Kong especially, we can find out that uh, these countries are grabbing the momentum. They already have developed so many uh, tools and regulatory frameworks that everybody is running around between those countries to establish the business, to register the companies, etc., etc. The good thing here for the Georgia is that, uh, for the Georgian regulatory framework, is that we do have uh, a stability here in the region, which mm -hmm. is number one issue. Uh, stability, uh, the public stability, so to say, economic stability as well. Mm -hmm. And now Georgia's regulatory agencies are starting to cope with it and adapt it. And uh, there were some developments in the crypto space lately from the central bank, uh, and the central bank is in partnership with Ripple to um, start testing the CBDC, which in my opinion is not that good, but still <laughs> that's a different topic to talk about. But in any case, we do have some sort of regulatory fair. Why is it important? Is it, it's important because when before some years ago when Georgia was a gray area, for an investor, for a company to come and establish the business was kind of a unpredictable. You never know what's going to come in terms of regulatory framework, you know. So it's always good to know what is in place and adjust your business towards it than to know nothing and what's going to come in the next. So now we have the more, more or less clear picture. Uh, recently, uh, there is a new securities law in place also, which is very important in terms of tokenization and uh, issuing the securities uh, and real world assets uh, tokenization also because when you fall behind of um, the regulatory framework, uh, everybody's going to Zug region, to Switzerland, to, to Liechtenstein, to Luxembourg, or any other places like Dubai, etc., etc., because they already have it. Mm. But in this part of the region, I think Georgia is a pioneer of establishing this everything, and uh, this is going to be a really, really good environment. Why? Because this is a combination of many things in Georgia, like starting from the regulatory framework, the, the friendly environment with different status of IT free zones, you know, the industrial zones, the free economic zones, plus with the climate, the food, the hospitality thing and all these things, you know, uh, it's much better. And would you elaborate more on this, like security uh, law? Yeah, security law, uh, it's been a long and many years of discussion uh, in different Georgian uh, governmental circles, but finally, um, uh, with the due lobbying from the relevant law firms and the technology companies as well, uh, finally the parliament adopted it and it's quite recent and very important because uh, now, um, uh, let, that, let's put it this way, the year of 2024 and especially the next year also is the year of tokenization and if you don't have, as a small country like Georgia, if you don't have the relevant uh, regulatory framework, you for sure fall behind. And that's why when a person can issue and tokenize, not to wait for the IPOs, which takes a lot of uh, you know, paperwork, you know, regulatory work, and in Georgia we don't have this kind of a tradition, a financial tradition of issuing IPOs, etc. And this law brings the new opportunity from those companies around the globe to establish the company here to issue the uh, securities on blockchain and to tokenize the real world assets. Then these real world assets are from wine to real estate to almost everything which can potentially bring a cash flow and the liquidity. What was uh, lacking at the Georgian market was still at some point is the liquidity and um, the capital also, the absence of uh, capital which is mostly funded by the banks, the big banks. We do have a very developed banking system. But now we are talking about the decentralized system like blockchain, all right? So uh, we need the proper legislation sort of for an investor. For myself, for example, I have already established and brought in to the country companies from Silicon to Japan. And now they are trying to, you know, establish and go through this, all this regulatory framework, which is very easy, unlike, for example, uh, other countries like Switzerland. Mm. It's very easy. But the good thing is also is that it's very cheap. You know, if you compare it to the prices in Liechtenstein, in uh, Luxembourg, in Switzerland, it's like 20 times cheap. It's like 25 times cheap, you know. It's so cheap and it's so fast that you can literally start doing business next day. Wow. So that's the uh, kind of an advantage of uh, the regulatory framework here. And um, there are not much demands from the regulatory side. 
all the KYC and AML procedures and demands and requirements are in place already. So um, banking system is working fast and uh, quite flexible, and but also the payment system. And there are some new startups that can uh, immediately install there and integrate their <coughs> solutions in terms of fiat, crypto, you know, transactions and payments, etc., remittances, whatever. That um, it's it's really really attractive right now. And it's getting more, but there is more needed. You know, you can have uh, on the one side the climate, you can have the regulatory framework, you can have uh, nice food, hospitality, you know, nice, um, you know, weather and the places, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, what we need more, and I'm the person who has seen it globally, mm -hmm. who has seen it from the outset in Dubai since 2014 when they adopted the strategy, Oman 2012, Malta in 2016, etc., Singapore, etc. All these countries have so much gained in terms of capital, in terms, in terms of businesses, in terms of investment. That, for example, if you look at the uh, Emirates, uh, what would you think the uh, percentage of oil into GDP of Emirates is? 1%. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine? So everybody thinks, oh, they do have oil. It's not about the oil. It's about the regulatory framework, how you attract the international companies, especially in comparison with those companies that are for example, based in the U.S. or based in China, where we have the centralized system, mm -hmm. or in the U.S., where you always have the um, still unclear regulatory landscape, and you never know when the Securities Commission will sue you. Uh, unlike Georgia, for example, where you're more or less uh, absolutely uh, protected from this, you mm. know, and the government is also trying to uh, support this, you know. Well, so this is the... Um, uh, this is the overall uh, sort of thing, uh, assessment. <laughs> I would love to just keep you talking and listen. I will make some popcorn because it's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, what you mentioned, Georgia, seems to be a big uh, upcoming uh, hidden gem, or I think it's already it already is nowadays. But like with the new uh, legal establishments, that uh, looks very promising. Um, Okay, what else is there that Georgia could actually learn from other countries, especially um, maybe Dubai? Yeah, that's a very good question. It's such a big question that uh, we can talk a lot. <laughs> and you, uh, you, will gain, you, you, will gain, you will gain some weight because of the popcorn. Right? <laughs> so you better make it short. Um, well, I mean, the, the, that's I already mentioned, and uh, this is also the point. For example, if you take the take the regulatory system in Switzerland, the Zug region especially, they do have a DLT law since mm. many years now. And mm. DLT law covers everything in terms of blockchain, smart contracts, crypto, tokenization, securities, etc., etc. So when you have the, you know, the given framework, as an investor, as a business person, as an entrepreneur, you can always navigate easily. You can predict, you can know what's going to come in the next couple of years so you can plan your business, you can plan your investment and be secure. We're talking about Switzerland and that's what we can also learn from Switzerland as well. In Georgia and Switzerland is not the big countries in size, you know, and, they, yeah. and it's all about vision. Mm. It's all about the public vision. Uh, in, in public, I mean government. And it's about implementation mm -hmm. properly. So first you have the vision and then you cover it with different um, the regulatory system, which is attractive for uh, foreign foreign investment, you know, and it's not about investment only. Investment is something um, mistakenly perceived as uh, the goal. Investment is not the goal. Goal is to have the environment mm. where people can freely go and do what they want. Mm. You know, of course, coping with the legislation mm -hmm. and uh, with the minimum standards, mm -hmm. and that's how, when you create this environment. Then you create the different vision of a country, mm -hmm. you know. If you compare it to Dubai, okay, there are big differences, of course, but if you still compare to it, uh, it's absolutely unbelievable what was 15 years ago in Dubai and what it is now. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the regulatory system only. It's about how the country changed, transformed itself, mm -hmm. and how was it perceived 15 years ago, and how is it perceived now? It's something where everybody wants to go. It's mm -hmm. not just about Burj Khalifa, you know, or some other great things there. It's about the environment which is being created there constantly. So in Georgia, what we also want to do and we have to do and we should do this is that to create the 
some sort of a safe haven for technology. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I was my if it was my decision, I would uh, make a big part of the country territory as a free technology zone. Okay, mm. so they everybody can come and you know do what they want, uh, uh, given the fact that they copy mm. the legislation, basic legislation. What I mean, the criminal law, you know, money laundering and uh, etc., organized crime, everything. But um, this is number one. Number two is. Um, as a country to start developing your education system in a new way of thinking. Uh, what I mean by this is the new way of thinking is not, is not something that you teach your young people um, just uh, some basic things like history, literature. That's necessary, that's important. But if you take India, in India you have 5 million developers more than in Georgian whole population. And then now Microsoft is going to train two million more AI developers, mm -hmm. which will give India seven million uh, recorded and uh, reported uh, amount of developers, which is twice more than Georgia. Okay, so in this harshly speedy development of the situation and changing in the global market, you have to adapt to it. You know? mm -hmm. And by adoption, I mean that you adapt your every single important system which can enable future generations to be safeguarded as in the environment, but also as in a political system, and also in a regulatory system, and the system where there is an inflow of different uh, capital, there is an inflow of different investment and attraction of different businesses and companies, but also possibility to work from here, from mm. this nice you know, uh, place uh, globally, mm -hmm. and you know, and you can be competitive on the on the bigger scale in terms of a global market. Yeah, thank you so much for sharing your perception. I have to say that I'm actually pretty optimistic when it comes to Georgia because I've been talking to a few different people over the past uh, weeks, and I've heard a lot about some different uh, developments, uh, both on the educational level and uh, more universities uh, being involved into like more technological perspective, AI perspective, development perspective, blockchain for sure, but also the companies coming in and sponsoring or uh, creating their own educational programs. So I would say that this is in progress as well with well with the uh, free zones. I'm, I'm sure that you know more about the development uh, from the legal perspective yourself. Uh, but I know that there might be also some changes, let's see, well, whatever uh, happens, but uh, uh, this is really nice. Um, I would like maybe to get Sile back to, since uh, you've been involved and saw the Georgian development over a long time. So, um, how would you, and you mentioned that Georgia is stable, uh, but how would you describe the last 15 years? of developments of Georgia? Steady and slow. <laughs> okay. They, they, I, because, I, mean, you know, I'm, I know everything now. You yeah. know, I'm Georgian and I want to everything right now, especially when I look at different countries, what they have done. Yeah. For example, if you take, take Malta. Mm -hmm. Malta is a 100,000 population country. And as soon as they adopted the relevant um, regulation, in six months they got 1.6 billion direct investment. 1.6 mm -hmm. billion in six months, just because of the legislation. Okay, so when I what say... What particular uh, legislation was it? It's yeah. about crypto. Okay. Uh, it's about crypto, establishment and incorporation of companies related to blockchain, etc., technology, etc., etc. So it was as early as 2017 and 18. Mm -hmm. So uh, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm saying that I want everything fast, actually I mean that it's a bit late uh, already because some of the countries, uh, the especially small countries, the countries of the size of the of, of Georgia, mm -hmm. have already done this uh, some years ago. And now, well, um, when something is now happening in Georgia, the big changes are happening, I wish it could have been done uh, a mm -hmm. couple of years ago, okay? Because it increases your competitive investment competitiveness mm -hmm. uh, around the globe. Yeah, it's not, um, but there is also uh, even bigger in the, uh, as a gem, as a country, as a gem, as an investment gem uh, mm -hmm. for uh, as for the country, there are bigger opportunities here, mm -hmm. much bigger opportunities here, and uh, we can talk about this as well. Yeah, uh, you know, like I I can see that these things are shifting. 
So first companies are, to many companies, the transition from one uh, country to another is usually, it means a high transaction costs. So Georgia has is still very competitive since um, you, it, it's not, as you already mentioned, it's not that expensive to start making business here. Uh, it's low bureaucratic, it's not very difficult to make business from here, etc. And plus it offers new uh, legal frameworks uh, okay steadily slowly <laughs> but uh, I mean the thing is that uh, you have like high over bureaucratic uh, places and regions and it becomes unbearable to certain countries like I know a lot of people want to get a away from the EU uh, because actually it's it has very big legal frameworks but it doesn't mean that it's uh, comfortable for the companies and also it it is difficult then to actually enter the market because you have to be compliant which is not possible anymore for small businesses and for small companies so people who are about to start a new business uh, people who want to invest they are actually seeking another solutions and you mentioned Hong Kong uh, but uh, at the same time Hong Kong uh, my not offer such a political stability at the moment as from what I just noticed recently. So there are companies who are considering where to migrate. Dubai as well just announced some new higher uh, tax laws like uh, it's been changing. And so I mean, I think that uh, maybe we can see it also from the perspective that Georgia actually checks what's working around the world and implements what is working well to its all legal framework. What do you uh, think? In terms of, uh, in terms of tax taxation, actually Georgia has a really, really attractive uh, environment, especially in the technology field. Mm. Uh, and uh, just because uh, Dubai uh, has already explored, attracted more than 30,000 companies, mm. Uh, now they have a flexibility to, you know, increase taxes or whatever yeah. because these uh, companies are making so much money just being there, uh, so that it's 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 possible, uh, it's affordable for the market. Uh, but what is affordable in some way I, might not be affordable uh, somewhere else, you know, mm. especially in Georgia. And we don't have to uh, invent a new bicycle. Uh, what we have to do is just broaden what we have been offering uh, so far. Mm -hmm. We have to do a bit more, you know, mm -hmm. so to keep this competitiveness. Nice. Uh, when you have a, a pretty easy uh, incorporation uh, procedure in the country, then you can establish the company overnight with uh, like le less uh, money than anywhere. For example, if you want to get this uh, new um, virtual asset service provider license, it's 30k somewhere else. Mm -hmm. Legal cost costs uh, 40k around, mm -hmm. and uh, you spend around 100k for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Where, while in Georgia, you can spend 2k as a license price and like a couple of thousand more just to be established fully there. Mm -hmm. So, which is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And you enjoy this uh, regulatory framework, you are literally not limited to anything. Mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, the only limitation on the market is. Um, uh, issuing uh, loans to uh, individuals, mm -hmm. uh, crypto, I mean crypto loans. Uh, then okay. the, other than that, everything is permitted, everything is friendly, and mm -hmm. so you can, you can enjoy it. Um, so that's, that's why I think that uh, I'd, rather, uh, I'd rather suggest to different international companies to be based in Georgia because of taxes, mm -hmm. because of easy uh, starting the business, because of some governmental programs like uh, cooperation programs like Enterprise Georgia is doing something, uh, you know, the Georgian uh, technology and the Ministry of Economy actually tries to, uh, especially tries to, you know, bolster and uh, foster all this um, potential for the country. And to the biggest uh, also uh, potential is that we are um, part and we do have free trade with the European Union mm -hmm. and we do have free trade with China. As for the European Union, uh, yeah, I know that and um, one of the, my uh, specialties is uh, European Union law and I know how it works, especially in, <laughs> in competitiveness uh, and the single, much, right? single market, but <laughs> you cannot avoid in any case your uh, 500 million single market, you know, mm. and whatever solution you do and if you, if you want to scale it up internationally, you cannot avoid EU market. That's the given fact. Yeah. Yeah. So if there is AI regulation there and you have to 
uh, make a compliance of your AI tools mm -hmm. to be used in the EU free market, you have to make sure that it's a low risk. It's not even medium or high risk, and it's in the legislation already. So mm -hmm. these are different things. Mm -hmm. But here, for example, Sam Altman went to Dubai and negotiated with the government of Dubai uh, to uh, make Dubai as a testing ground for AI innovation. Mm -hmm. a testing ground means that it's free. Mm -hmm. You can literally start doing, inventing anything into robotics and AI, everything. Mm -hmm. You know, risky, non-risky, medium risk, etc. But here, you have even you don't even have that. You can do whatever you want, mm -hmm. basically. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, in AI regulation here is even less than into blockchain. Mm -hmm. So especially this is important because this is the momentum where big companies can grab the moment. Mm -hmm. The only thing you have to do is to bring to them to the table this potential. Nice. You know. So if you and it, it's about the marketing, it's about the country marketing, it's about the marketing like me and you. you know? Yeah, uh, we're just doing it. Yeah. Right <laughs> so, yeah. so that's why um, you, you you may be um, very pretty, but you have to show it off. You know? uh, so the so the uh, uh, good good people see it. Yeah, uh, oh, thank you. Well, <laughs> indeed, uh, just a very short question with a very short answer. Would you say that it's easy? With, uh, to communicate in Georgia between the market and the government? Uh, the best uh, best environment is where you don't have to communicate between those too much. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when, when the market is uh, self-containing and uh, free and the, the stability of regulation is, is in place, mm -hmm. you don't need much to um, communicate with the government. Mm -hmm. But in terms of bureaucracy, which is something different from the government, uh, it should be so easy uh, that um, you you should not feel overburdened with a lot of paperwork, things like that. Yeah. For example, um, recently one of the banks got the uh, license of the digital the digital banking, and they said they brought like uh, three vans full of uh, paperwork. Oh yeah. Yeah. So so now this country also needs to adapt to it, like digital digitalized um, application, processing system, everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it's in place, especially in revenue services, in Ministry of Finance. But uh, there is a lot to do. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot to be done, and um, a special blockchain can help with uh, okay. this, uh, with the single identity things, mm. and the things that uh, you know. Um, some years ago, we, Georgia established a one-window uh, procedure where you can go and do everything in one window, from your passport to a, a registered company, everything in one window. But now you have to have the single identity on blockchain, where you can do from one application. And if you look at other countries like Dubai or any uh, any other else, you can you can see that um, there is potential, there is possibility, and most of it, it works. And that's mm -hmm. very important because you can invent a lot of tools, you can you can create a lot of solutions, but what is important that it should be adaptable by the public, mm -hmm. by a private sector, and by general public also. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um... Oh my gosh, I would talk to you for hours. <laughs> I can't do this. But uh, you were mentioning one of the very new to come projects here in Georgia to be part of uh, when it comes to... Yeah, that's yes. a good uh, reminder. Thank you. Uh, actually, when you when you mentioned the gem, uh, the, what is the gem uh, in terms of the country? and. Uh, you know, and we all know that Georgia is in very, very convenient geographically and geopolitically and geostrategically in terms of business and, uh, uh, you know, uh, transportation mm -hmm. uh, located. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, everybody knows the Silk Road, you know, that was a big concept, the North Silk Road, the South Silk Road, and now we have the more middle corridor. A middle corridor is a combination of 14 countries from China to European Union and is supported by World Bank, European Bank, and politically and economically, etc. It's a more than 20 billion um, project, uh, which will unify under one umbrella uh, the transportation route between those countries from China to European Union, which is a huge thing. And um, this is the pot real potential of Georgia. This is the, not only just economic, but also geopolitical uh, mm -hmm. potential of Georgia, which should be developed, not just as a, um, a side-watching uh, object, but as a, as a participant, as a 
initiator of these things. And um, this is, um, I'm talking about the digitalization of the whole middle corridor. Mm -hmm. And we are, you can use, and uh, we will use blockchain, we will use um, IoT, we will use AI for everything transportation is in place. So this will uh -huh. make easy for every single participant from private sector to transportation to driver to everything in terms of, of course, these 14 countries, uh, that uh, everything will be um, digitalized, meaning that all payments, servitudes, customs, taxes, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, other payment um, possibilities and the inter company B2B transactions or uh, other types of transactions and the collecting taxes or etc will be done in a single identity engine which is uh, uh, let's call it a, a middle corridor engine mm -hmm. and there are many uh, companies right now already involved in this uh, big companies from Switzerland from the countries that are also um, have developed companies in terms of uh, doing and offering such services. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, a couple of years ago, there was a project of uh, uh, making um, seaports on blockchain, which was the IBM Maersk project. Okay. Uh, but it didn't work. Why? Because it was um, mostly 99% based on private engagement. And at that time, and it, I'm talking about six years ago, mm -hmm. uh, neither business nor public uh, we are ready for the adoption. Mm. And why? Because in port administration, administration system, where the money is, these old traditional businesses did not see the potential into new technologies. Mm. But now this has changed. Now this brings so much potential that you can literally at least double your income, your revenue, your cash flow, your liquidity mm. by doing this unified big projects okay so this is a huge room for investment this is a huge room for uh, making interest for every uh, single player in this from a small uh, transportation company to the government mm. and so this is a kind of a global consortium of those 14 countries mm. uh, digitizing this um, uh, transportation route which is called middle corridor uh -huh. Thank you so much. It's, it sounds super interesting. I can also imagine that for companies who want to start on a smaller market just to test, like let's say in Georgia, even if they are abroad, so then they can very easily expand to other countries. It will be a way easier for them. Is that right? Uh, Would you... I just let me let me mention one very specific thing. Uh -huh. Today we are living into technology era, era of Internet. We call it Web 2, Web 3, and the Web 4 is coming. It doesn't matter. We live in uh, this world, which has one very specific feature, which is extraterritoriality, which means mm. that you can do your business from whenever you want. The only difference is where you feel more comfortable to do your business, which part of the globe. Is it New Zealand, or is it Georgia, or is it Thailand, Bali, wherever? Where the moments go? No much I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay? So this is one thing where the freelancers go, uh, developers go, developers' concentration is there. But there is another uh, in terms of a company, in terms of a corporate business, uh, where they choose to go. Mm. You know? So it does not really matter nowadays the country because you can scale up your business from anywhere in the world and reach out big markets like US, European Union, China, and others, okay, mm. from anywhere in the world, you know. So this is what matters. And in this opportunity, you have a big opportunity as a government, as a public sector, to squeeze with the most attractive environment, which in Georgia now we have, at, let's say, 70% already in place. More can be done and will be done, I'm pretty sure, because uh, there is a will to do so. Wow, I feel now so hopeful, you know. <laughs> it, it sounds now like a very smart move to actually just move to Georgia. Are you optimistic yourself when it comes to government and new, uh, new development of legislation? Uh, you, you want me to sound political? You can. <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. Um, well, I, I'm optimistic. Uh, yeah. The government um, is adaptive. 
to new ideas. Mm. I do talk uh, with uh, high government officials, including ministers, on different projects, etc. And, uh, for example, without the involvement of uh, the Minister of Economy, uh, Mr. Levon Davitashvili, who is really open-minded uh, guy, and uh, uh, you cannot develop such a big project, mm. uh, what I'm talking about, you know. There is ultimately necessary a government and public involvement in this, you know. At the, at the initial stage. Uh, after that, you know, private sector is doing everything fine on the blockchain, on the technology, etc. But in the initial stage, you need government, for mm. sure. And the government has this kind of vision. That's why I'm hopeful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming today and for sharing your insights. Now I feel super hopeful about where it all goes in the next, uh, I wouldn't say years, actually. Georgia is really very flexible to me. So in the next months, for sure. And uh, thank you so much for watching. I will uh, bring in some new guests for you in the next weeks and months. And uh, that is it from Tbilisi, from Georgia today. If you are curious about some particular other topic, please let me know in the comments. I'll read it and uh, I'll see what I can do for you. Take care and uh, cheers. <laughs>